Hello everyone, I'm Sophie and I'm currently at Kachara Forest Retreat, Bentong, Malaysia. And this is the book that I'll be reading from, Tales My Lama Told Me, by Pastor David Lai. Um, the stories within are told by our Guru, His Eminence, the 25th, Sam Tuku Rinpoche. And today I will continue on with chapter 14. The, um, this Hard Times, this is actually a story about Rinpoche during his uh, younger years in New Jersey, uh, America. So this I'll be reading from page 136. Sorry, this is the picture that I'll share with you. This is Rinpoche in his teens with his mother, the adoptive mother. Okay, page 136. Then I would have to put lime in the soil. We had a machine for that, and I would put lime in, which is released into the earth to make it not so sour as she calls it. After that, I would fertilize the soil. That would take me between half a day to three quarters of a day. There goes my whole Saturday. I was only allowed to watch Scooby-Doo and a few cartoons early in the morning before they both got up, which was my only respite as a child. Once they were up, I had to make breakfast for both of them. I had to cook, make tea and serve it up to them. After that, I would have to clean up and then go outside and to do the gardening. My childhood was no picnic at all. As I said before, any mistakes I made would have repercussions for me, and that would mean doing even more gardening to make up for it. Every alternative day, or sometimes every third day, and on weekends it was a given that I had to clean up the house. That meant changing all the sheets, including pillowcases, pillow covers and sheets in her room, my room, and those from the two other bedrooms. I had to change all the sheets on my own and replace them with new sheets. It all had to be done perfectly. In her bedroom, she had her bureau on which she placed many doilies, which she had knitted herself. There were about 20 to 30 bottles of perfume, jewellery and little things on top of all the doilies. In order to clean the dressing table, I had to remove everything carefully, wipe it properly, take off the doilies, change them and send them for laundering. Not naturally, I also had to do the laundry and make sure that it was done well. When the laundry was complete, I would have to iron the doilies, make sure they were perfect and starched well because if they were not, there would be a nasty warning from her. After all the sheets were done, I would polish the wooden floors once a week. I would sprinkle carpet fresh powder onto the carpet all over the house, from upstairs in all the bedrooms all the way downstairs. Then I would wait exactly 15 minutes. If I waited too long, the powder would sink in and I would get it. After 15 minutes, I would vacuum everything to remove the powder and the smell. Then I had the stairs to clean, which was such a torture. I had to vacuum the stairs, and it wasn't with one of those small vacuums that we have today, with the small hoses. It was a huge vacuum cleaner, which I could barely hold up on the stairs as a kid. She had very sharp eyes. If I missed a spot and she saw it, she would react. Her reaction would depend on her mood that day. If she was in a good mood, she would just say, Oh, look at that. But if she was in a foul mood, I would be punished severely. If she was in a mediocre mood, which was often, then it would simply build up and maybe two or two to three days later, she would recall everything clearly and I would still be punished. Then I would have to polish the furniture in the living room and the dining room. Even the silverware had to be polished every three to four months. Cleaning the silverware was such a nightmare as it had to be perfect and spotless. She had chinaware that had gold edging and it was obviously very expensive. They were irre irre replaceable, 
because she bought them all the way from Europe. I was very nervous because if anything broke or chipped, that would be it for me. I also had to clean the white kitchen floors and she happened to like it completely white. This was a nightmare as my father wore shoes with rubber soles. Every time he walked in, the shoe would leave, leave prints everywhere. She fe he felt that because he was the man of the house, he could wear whatever he liked in his own house. In America, you wear shoes indoors, so there would be footprints everywhere and she would freak out. Naturally, I had to frantically clean it all up. When my father was around, I would have to get onto the floor constantly and literally start scrubbing after him. The kitchen was not a clear open space either, as there was a dining room table and chairs right in the middle of the room. I would have to move everything out, scrub the floor and put it all back in place. I used too, if I used too much chemical, she would smell it and I would get it. If the floors weren't clean enough, I would still get it. I would get a beating as a punishment and I would have to do it all over again after everybody had gone to sleep. I did that for years until she finally decided to change the flooring one day. She changed it to some Egyptian design which had all kinds of colours that would hide the stains. Until then, it was years of white flooring before she decided to change to this new flooring. I almost jumped for joy. I went upstairs and I said a big thank you to the Buddha. I didn't have to constantly scrub the floor on my knees every day anymore. When it was laundry time, I would be sent to the laundromat about 20 minutes away because we didn't have any machines of our own. I would have to separate the laundry, wash it, dry it, fold it and bring it back. The whole process took two to three hours each time. Everything had to be folded and returned perfectly to its place. Her clothes, my stepfather's clothes, the sheets and the towels all had their own places. Of course, everything had to be folded perfectly without anything out of order. As I got older, my responsibilities increased and became much more than simply cleaning. I would be like a little maid, helping to serve her guests during parties and dinners. She would throw big dinner parties for about 15 of her friends. They would come over and play bingo. It was fun for them, but a total nightmare for me because we would have to spend two days prior to the events cooking. She liked to cook and was a great cook. She would bake cookies, pastries and all kinds of food and I would have to help her. During the party, I was basically the serving maid. I would have to serve everybody and make sure all the ladies had tea or whatever drinks they wanted. I would have to serve pastries first and then the food. Throughout the whole evening, I would have to stand by to watch and make sure that everything was cleared nicely. If I missed a dish or something went wrong, she wouldn't do anything in front of the guests, but after they are gone, I would get it. In that way, she was very Joan Crawford. Her parties would usually last all night long, and when the last lady finally left, it would be at the crack of dawn. Only after they left was I allowed to go to sleep, but before crawling into bed, I would have to put away the leftover food so it wouldn't spoil. When I got up the next day, I would have to clean up all the glasses, silverware, pots and pans. It would take me one or two hours of washing to get it all done. We didn't have a dishwasher at that time, so everything was clean by hand. If there were any residual oil stains left, there would be a major uproar. So I had to be really careful. Eventually, I had to learn to cook Mongolian food and make sure there was always food. 
I didn't know a lot of dishes for cooking, but enough for simple daily meals, and I knew how to make tea the way she liked it. I had to serve her personally and make sure she had drinks all the time. I had to make sure she had whatever she needed. Even when I got older, I was not allowed out on weekends. I was not even allowed to go out with friends or relatives and basically almost never allowed out of the house except for school. If I did manage to go out with anybody, it was because she was in an exceptionally good mood. If I did manage to convince her to let me go out with my cousins or friends, I would be threatened when I came home. She would ask me if I had slept with them, whether they molested or touched me, or if that was what they really wanted from me. That was her hang-up all the time, which I couldn't understand then. This happened when Ever I was allowed to go out. At that time, going out with one of my cousins or relatives was my only respite. But when I came home, I was accused of doing things with them, and sometimes in her paranoia, she would scream that I was plotting against her, and she would threaten me. Okay, I will stop there. And continue on with my next um, sharing. So, as you can see from the reading, how difficult Rinpoche's life was. And this was when he was really young, you know, when still in his schooling days. And... When we complain of our lives, think of what Rinpoche had gone through. So it's, a, it's really, you know, his teaching is also a, te a lesson for us that nothing is difficult. Well, at least not as difficult as what Rinpoche has gone through. And after all that, he is still very strongly um, attached to Dharma. Well, I say attached, but he's very strongly you know, he had that strong um, wish to be in Dharma. Well, anyway, you'll find out more as we as I read along. And so we'll end this with a completion dedication in uh, Tibetan. Jangjo Senjo Rinpoche, Make Panam Gishi, Kepanam Pame Payang, Goni Gondo Pewashu, Tony Do Rinpoche, Make Panam Gishi, Kepanam Pame Payang, Goni Gondo Pewashu, Daso Genes of Pagi Wadi, Tanta Droma Guna Kampada, Chepajesu Nasan Trapai, Tumping in Porin to Sase Show, Kewa Kuntu Yandala Mada, Dromichogi Panala Chochi, Satam Nangi Yaterazoni, Doji Changing of Pangatus, Gewa Din, you do the Lama Sangi Druyone, Drua Chikia Manupa, De Salago Pashu. Joki Gabusun Kappa, Chosunam Pape Wala, Geki Sama Siwa Dan, Tungi Malo Sawa Sho, Dada Sangi Dosun Dan, Dreamy Songi Latini, Gewalo Santrapai, Tampayo River, Gushi, Nimo de la Zendele, Nimigun Yendeleshi, Nisin Tatu de la Pell, Kuncho Sungi Jingilo, Kuncho Sungi Odroso, Kuncho Sungi Trasi, Sho, Jesunama Kusin Raptinchi, Namka Trini Chochu Kipa Dang, Losan Tempe Dromis of Sungi. Draw him in Satatoni, Gushi, Gangri Rawi, go wishing come then, Penda and Deo Malu go in, Charan Zay, one tens in Gasoi, Shapi Shiri, Padu Deng, Gushi, Hom, Dumping Odru Malupa, then the Dalla Sal do so, Kod and Depa Long Shotnam, Kepa Sushi Shukton Sal. Thank you again for joining me, and please do join me as I read on from the chapter. <laughs> 